Hey guys, it's Sketchy Dragon here with part 3 of the Black Opal. If you haven't seen part 1 or part 2 of the Black Opal, make sure to go check those videos out before watching this one. Now I might sign a little funny right now because I have an expander in and it makes it a little harder to talk. Other than that, let's get on with the video. Swallowtail was relaxing, not how other dragons would usually relax themselves. Yet, sitting alone and drawing was one of his favorite things to do, especially when his sister was gone. Anything that came to his mind, he would put on the paper. Before he knew it, he started drawing mildew. Why am I still thinking about her? Swallowtail grumbled to himself. Usually, he forgets about her and continues about his day, but since the courtyard incident, he felt differently. Swallowtail didn't quite know what to make of his change of heart. He actually liked the conversation he had with Mildew the other day. He actually enjoyed spending time with her. Despite the short time he had talked with her, she talked a lot about having visions. Which wouldn't make sense, Swallowtail thought to himself. Or would it, he continued. She is a hybrid, and we don't know what sort of powers those dragons have. Thinking about it further... He didn't know what type of dragon Mildew's father was. If she actually wasn't joking about her prophetic powers. Wait, what kind of dragon can have prophetic powers? Could she see weeks, months, or even years in the future? I wonder if you could see me. His sketch almost finished, he heard a knock on the door. Huh, he thought. Who could that be? Swallowtail walked toward the door to open it, not exactly expecting to see Camberwell in soft life. He rolled his eyes and said, Camberwell, you know you can just come. He paused and locked eyes with Mildew, leaving a quick, uncomfortable silence. Mildew moved her gaze downward, breaking the silence. Hi, she said. After a moment, he cleared his throat. Um, uh, come in, he offered. After he let them all in, Camberwell slipped off to her room with Mildew, following clo close behind her, leaving Swallowtail and Sawfly alone with each other. Swallowtail spoke up. Well, you guys weren't gone long. Yeah, Sawfly sighed. I told Camberwell about the incident at the market, and she happened to be at the library. He shrugged. A few moments passed before Sawfly asked him, Do you like her? What? Why would you ask that? Sawfly asked. The inquiry took Swallowtail off guard, even though he'd been asking himself that very question all day. Sawfly nodded his head towards Swallowtail's sketchbook, laying open with the sketch of Mildew visible. Swallowtail turned red. Um, that? That's nothing. I draw what I think about, and... Swallowtail glanced at Sawfly. The right side of Sawfly's mouth moved upward into a mischievous grin. Swallowtail's cheeks flushed a bright red as he gathered his supplies and quickly shut his sketchbook. Never mind, he huffed. Swallowtail and Sawfly sat in silence. After what felt like an eternity, Swallowtail took his sketchbook to draw again. Suddenly, they heard Camberwell shout, Great Pintala, are you okay? Mildew, are you alright? Confused, the two dragons followed Mildew, who was forcing Camberwell toward the front door. Then Mildew shouted, Everyone out now! Swallowtail glanced at Sawfly, then obeyed what Mildew had commanded. Once they were all outside, Camberwell asked, Why do we need to leave? What's happening? Mildew opened her mouth, but was interrupted by a scream. They all looked down the street to see where the terrifying sound came from. Then they heard another scream. Fire! Fire! Fly! Fly! Mildew shouted. Confused, he leaped into the air along with the other three dragons. The four of them looked on in horror, watching the fire spread from Swallowtoe's house to a dozen, dozen surrounding houses, as the nearest dozen houses were set ablaze. After flying away and coughing from the smoke they had breathed in, they landed a safe distance away from the fire. How did you know? Softly asked Mildew. Frustrated, Mildew snarled, I have prophecy powers. 
and it would help if some dragons believed me. She narrowed her eyes at Swallowtail. Look, I'm sorry. I didn't know that was even possible. He defended himself. Melody looked away to compose herself. No, I'm sorry. She pulled her attention toward Swallowtail and looked into his eyes. Chills went through Swallowtail when her beautiful green eyes met his. Wait, let me get this straight. Camberwell coughed. You have prophecy powers, she pointed at Mildew. You knew the whole time, Camberwell directed her finger at Swallowtail. And didn't tell me? Well, to be fair, Mildew told her, I only knew about it two days ago. You are the second and third dragons to know, really. Okay, Camberwell answered, accepting her response. So, you can tell me where I'm going to be in seven years? Camberwell closed her eyes as if it would help Mildew see her future. Mildew chuckled. No, that's not how it works. The visions come to me. Uninvitingly, I might add. That's so cool, Camberwell told her. What's it, what has it told you so far? Mildew told her Swallowtail's sister about the visions and dreams, sharing her thoughts on what they might mean. When it was safe to return home, they went to see Mildew's mother to ask her thoughts about the visions. Mildew looked slightly nervous. Hey, what's wrong? Swallowtail asked Mildew. I haven't exactly told my mother about the visions yet, she said quickly. Well, better late than never, he answered, trying to cheer her up. He noticed it didn't help much. When they arrived at Mildew's house, Swallowtail noticed the size of her house was considerably smaller than his. He supposed he was used to the luxury of his big house and having things, and often forgot that other dragons weren't as lucky. Swallowtail's thoughts moved to the day in the marketplace when he paid for her mangoes. Maybe she didn't have the money for them. Mildew reached for the door. When her talons brushed the handle, she staggered back in shock and held her head in pain. Swallowtail reached out to help her, but Camberwell was faster. Camberwell was holding her up as Mildew's body went limp. Mildew gazed at the dark sky fixated on the moons. What seemed to be a trance, she spoke. One of two will speak of thee, of a river coming of the sea. A tribe once gone will come again, you will find within their den. In between hills and in between canyons, beware in depth of the ruins. You will then find the answer to the gem of night. With a gasp, Modu blinked rapidly, awakened. What on Pantala was that? Camberwell asked, staring in awe. Sounded like a prophecy to me, Swallowtail said. Hey guys, so as amazing as this story is going, I want to maybe call it quits here for now. Don't get me wrong, I'll be continuing this story in book form. Yep, that's right, a book. But for now, I would like to draw. Other than that, this is the end of today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video. See you in the next one!